Hello and welcome to this issue of Motive Garage, proudly presented by Just Car Insurance. Today we are myth busting drag radials versus street tyres. Just how well do they work? Why do you need them? When do you need them? And how much do they improve? Your zero to 100 time, your 60 foot time, and your quarter mile time. Now, generally, when you switch to a drag radio, it's because the car has reached a high enough power level that you simply just cannot put that power to the ground and you want to go faster. Now, obviously, on a low powered car, it wouldn't be much of a test, so we've bought out our R32 GTR, which makes nearly 500 kilowatts at the wheels and is starting to struggle for traction in the first two gears at the drag strip and very much so struggling here at Cootamundra Airport. So, essentially, what we're going to do is quite simple. Simple. We're going to try out the street tyres first, measure all the acceleration times, switch to drag radials, do it here on a street surface, as well as do it at the drag strip. Let's go. When it came time to choose a drag radial, we went for the Hoosier DOT drag radial. Why? Well firstly, drag radials offer better stability, cornering and ride for driving on the street and work better at high speeds as well as being better suited to four-wheel drive cars, which need to both drive and steer with the front wheels. Drag radials also offer less rolling resistance than a cross-ply drag tyre. The Hoosier DOT drag radial meets American Department of Transport certification, so it can be used in DOT racing classes. But with no real tread on it and a tread wear rating of 40, it's not for highway use and is really for racing use only. This doesn't bother us though, but if you choose to ignore the warning, we can tell you that it does drive perfectly fine in dry weather on the road and has no problem driving to and from the track. However, we can also tell you from experience, do not drive the car on a wet road. We also chose it because it is available to suit an 18 by 9 inch rim and fits our guards with a 24540 R18. The main reason we chose it was after going for a ride in Matuk's Racing Street King equipped with the exact same tyres and a thousand horsepower. If it worked for them, it would surely work for us. The first step was to get them fitted up by our friends at Autocraze. Although we have run the car at Cootamundra Airport already, we decided to run the car on the different tyres back to back. First up, the Achilles Radial 123S. We actually managed to get a PB 60 foot time of 1.81. We usually run around the 1.88 to 1.92 area. We decided to measure 0 to 90 km per hour as the short ratio 6 speed only goes to 101 km per hour when heating the rev limiter, so we decided to keep it consistent by going to 90. We managed a 2.78, which would equate to a 0 to 100 time of approximately 3.2 seconds. Our quarter mile time was 10.92 at 133 miles per hour, slightly better than our previous best. It was then time to fit up the drag radials. We set the pressures to the recommended 18 psi and set off down the runway a few times to scrub them in a little. We first tried launching the car on the same RPM as on the Achilles 123s. As you can see, the extra grip causes the car to bog, so we needed some more revs. I'll tell you one thing, it's never launched like that at Cootamundra before, that's for sure. It's uh, 
Normally I have to pedal it in first gear on this power level. Uh, it's got more than it did last time, but on the Hoosiers, I can just get that little bit of wheel spin I need to get moving and just drive right through it, pull second and off you go. So uh... On only our second attempt, we managed to drop our times dramatically. Our 60 foot time was 1.588 more than two tenths quicker. Our zero to 90 time was a stonking 2.431 seconds, equating to a sub three seconds zero to 100 time. And our quarter mile time dropped to 10.52 seconds, proving the common phrase that a tenth in the 60 is worth at least double at the other end. Looks like it's not a myth after all. Next, we hit Sydney Dragway to see how well they worked at the strip. Because the car runs in the tens and we get booted out each time, we only get one or two shots at it each time we attend and this time was no different. After a small warm up, we bogged down with a little two revs on the first launch and aborted the run. Next time around, we used a little too much revs and we spun. <laughs> on the run means there is certainly more time left in the car on these tyres. But the run is comparable to when we ran our 10.7 second pass and you can see the difference in times. A 1.721 foot on the Achilles and a 1.552 with the Hoosier. The 0.17 second gap moved out to over three and a half tenths by the 1 8th mile and by the end of the quarter mile our PB was cut by three and a half tenths. One thing the numbers don't show is that the car is now able to run full power in second gear without wheel spin. And we can now up the power further in the future and turn it into quicker times rather than wheel spin. With some more fine tuning of the suspension and some launch control, we have no doubt there is at least another tenth to find in the 60. But for a first attempt, you can see how easily we went quicker, both on the airport surface and at the track. They would also be great for events like power crews and roll racing as well, as they are still perfectly stable at high speeds and completely drivable on the street and around the track at power crews. So overall, there's no need to myth bust here. Just more proof that if you want to go quicker in racing, you need the right tool for the job.